looking at a 6x12 with 6 foot 3 inch interior tandem axle deep south trailer. Sits on two 3,500 pound axles, has a 2,000 pound tongue jack on it, breakaway battery, 2 and 5 16 coupler, and heavy duty chains. The trailer weighed 1,600 pounds coming from the factory. When we got done, we were right at 2,900 pounds. The GVWR on the trailer is 7,000 pounds, so at 2,900 empty weight, you have quite a bit of room to put some good stuff in there for your fun adventures. Now here's a look at the passenger side of the trailer. It has a 32 inch side entry door with a bar lock, another of the 20 by 30 windows on it. And as we pan around to the back, we're looking at the ramp. When I put the ramp down, you'll see that it is covered with RTP, both the flap and the ramp itself, as is the back end of the trailer. Now with the ramp down, you'll see that we have RTP on the flap, the ramp itself. As we move around and look into the trailer from the back, you'll see that the RTP runs up to the front kitchen area, which then transitions to vinyl plank. With the bed in the up position and the table in down position, there's enough room to get a 52 inch wide, 90 inch long four wheeler in there with no problem. You could get a 55 in, but it might be a tad bit tight. In the up position, the table has plenty of room for two people to sit, eat, work on the computer, play cards, do whatever you do inside a trailer when it's too cold to be outside or too rainy. The full size fold down bed is held up by latch straps on each end and it has a full length support out on the front and two fold down leg supports near the back edge. As the bed folds down, the front leg support will come down on its own. It supports the bed the full length. The rear of the bed rests on the cabinet that's underneath it and has the two fold down leg supports in the rear. When you want to put the bed back up, you simply do the reverse. And here in the front of the trailer, we have the kitchen area. It consists of a countertop with a 15 by 15 stainless steel sink and a USB powered rechargeable faucet. So we swing around, you'll notice the 5000 BTU air conditioner on the floor. And yes, for those of you that doubt it, it really does cool this trailer very well. We have a 2.7 cubic foot refrigerator, storage drawer above it, and in the cabinets of the left of the refrigerator is our electrical components. Our water storage consists of a six gallon fresh water tank and a six gallon gray water tank. Keeping the tanks the same size means you don't overflow them when you run too much gray water into the tank. Underneath the sink is quite a bit of storage area under there. What's underneath the storage platform is the ductwork for the air conditioner which vents out through the floor. The ceiling is tongue and groove pine plywood and all the woodwork in the trailer, ceiling, walls, cabinetry, countertop, bed, is covered in three coats of a satin water-based polyurethane floor finish. If it's strong enough to take the wear and tear that a floor gets, it's certainly going to stand up to whatever you can do to it in a trailer. The floor in the kitchen area is vinyl plank, and as I showed you before, we have the RTP that runs throughout the back and down the ramp. Here we have a 2.7 cubic foot mini fridge that will run either on shore power or off the inverter. We'll talk about the inverter system in just a minute. And then you'll notice that there is a drawer up above it. As I said before, this cabinet houses our electrical system. As we scan up above it, you will see an EP Ever 30 amp MPPT charge controller that's fed by a 250 watt solar panel up on the roof. Our electrical system is two parts. One is shore power. We have a 20 amp inlet on the outside of the trailer and the black wire down at the bottom brings the 20 amps into the trailer and feeds a single circuit which powers the air conditioner. The air conditioner draws under four and a half amps and about 420 watts while it's running. From that receptacle we go up to a GFCI receptacle which has a three port power cord plugged into it. The refrigerator 
and the circuit above the countertop are plugged into that GFCI. In the event that you want to be able to run the refrigerator and that circuit off the inverter, you simply unplug the power cord from the receptacle and plug it into the inverter. The 12 volt system consists of the 250 watt solar panel on the roof, the 30 amp MPPD charge controller I already showed you, two 88 amp hour AGM batteries, which are powering an 1100 watt inverter. We also have a 12 volt fuse block, which provides power for the recessed LED lights in the ceiling, and it's pre-wired for a vent fan if somebody wants to put a vent fan in. The inverter also has two USB ports on it for charging devices. We have six 3 watt LED lights in the ceiling, which are controlled by the switch next to the door. And we have two 20 by 30 windows, which allows for a lot of light and a ton of ventilation.